You can't really talk about the band Journey without mentioning frontman Steve Perry. He would lead the band to massive success in the 80s, then he quit, then he returned in the 90s till finally saying goodbye for good. He would become a recluse for nearly two decades. You may be wondering, what happened during the last time he returned to the group in the mid 90s? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. Journey was massive in the 80s. They seemed to release a record almost every year. They'd have numerous hits and singles and they even had their own video game released, which was a pretty big feat back then, considering that this was decades before Guitar Hero or even Rock Band came out. That's not to say, however, that the game was very good. In fact, it wasn't. I've done a video on the Journey video game. The link is down below. Harry would lead Journey during the group's most commercially successful periods from 1977 to 1987, and then again from 1995 to 1998. In between his stints with the band, he also launched a successful solo career, but also became reclusive for almost two decades before finally returning to music just a few years ago. Steve Perry was the son of Portuguese parents in California, his dad being a vocalist and was a co-owner of the radio station KNGS. Following his parents ending their relationship, he grew up on his grandparents' farm with his mother. The defining moment for his life would be at the age of 12 when he heard the Sam Cooke song Cupid. It was at that moment that made him realize that he wanted to have a career in music. In his early 20s, Perry moved around California playing in different bands. The moment that would really change his life was when he received a phone call from Journey's manager who had been given a tape of one of Perry's previous bands and was impressed with the singer's voice. Journey by this point in time were more progressive in their sound and was fronted by Robert Fleischman. Fleischman didn't prove, however, to be a good fit for the band and didn't get along with the group's manager. The band's manager, Herbie Herber, thought that he was cocky and believed that Perry would be a great great replacement. That's not to say that Fleischman wasn't important to the band. In fact, he co-wrote one of the band's biggest hits, Wheel in the Sky. Surprisingly, Perry would tour with the band while Fleischman was still fronting the group, but to avoid arousing any kind of suspicion, Fleischman was told that Perry was a roadie's Portuguese cousin. During a sound check ahead of a gig in Long Beach, California, Perry sang with the band on stage while Fleischman was off stage. Fleischman was informed shortly afterwards that Perry was the group's new singer, and that he was out of the band. Perry, for his part, brought a much more pop-influenced sound to the group, and the addition of the singer alienated the group's longtime fans of their progressive sound. Not that it really mattered, though, considering that Perry appeared to be the missing piece that the band needed in order to reach a new level of success. It was following the addition of Perry that the band would go on to dominate the 80s rock scene with hit album after hit album. After the group's 1983 album Frontiers, they would take some time off before reassembling to work on their follow-up record Raised on Radio. It was during the sessions, the wheels finally came off the band when Perry's mother had fallen ill, making the singer unavailable for large periods of time as he was attending to his ill parent. His mother would pass away during the recording of the album and the band would manage to finally finish the record and Raised on Radio would be the group's final record with Perry for nearly a decade. Further adding to Perry's emotional state was that him and his girlfriend had broken up. Journey would tour to support the album, but partway through the promotional tour, Perry told the band that he was done as he was mentally exhausted from the whole ordeal and the band disbanded in 1987. Perry would briefly be on speaking terms with his bandmates during this time. It was following his departure from the group that Perry in 1988 began recording his second solo album Against the Wall which would be temporarily shelved. According to Perry he didn't have the passion to continue to work on new music at the time. It was in between 1988 and 1994. He largely kept out of the spotlight for the most part making one-off appearances on stage with Bon Jovi and his former band. Bandmates. In 1994, Perry released his second solo album, and by the summer of 95, he reached out to former bandmate keyboardist Jonathan Kane to talk about reforming Journey, albeit with some stipulations. One of the stipulations was that the band's longtime manager, Herbie Herbert, not be involved. The band would soon enlist heavyweight manager Irving Asoff, who was instrumental in the success of the Eagles and their reunion. Bassist Ross Valerie and drummer Steve Smith were asked to join the reunion as well, and for Smith, it wasn't an easy choice. In the years since Journey split up, he'd started over by the mid-90s. He had a good career as a session musician and had his own band, so he was torn about whether to return or not, but he eventually decided to, as did Valerie. The years apart, though, did little to extinguish the musician's creative chemistry, as within several weeks of being back together, they'd already written nearly a dozen songs. The resulting album, Trial by Fire, would be released nearly 10 years after Journey's last record. Despite changing musical tastes and trends, the album was a big success upon its release. 
release, peaking at number three on the Billboard album charts, selling a million copies within a few months of release. The single When You Love a Woman would give the band their first ever Grammy nomination, and Journey would be scheduled to hit the road to support the record, but the wheels once again came off. Ahead of the planned tour, Steve Perry would retreat to Hawaii to physically prepare himself for the tour by going hiking, but his first hike would result in the vocalist noticing an acute amount of pain in his hip. He would soon call the band's manager Irving Asoff, informing him of the problem, and he soon left Hawaii for Los Angeles to seek medical care. Perry would soon be diagnosed with degenerative bone disease and would require hip surgery. Journey were now frozen. They couldn't tour, and Perry seemed unwilling or unwanting to do any promotion for the record, apart from doing the video for When You Love a Woman. Perry would cite the excruciating amount of pain for his limited promotion for the record, but also complicating matters was that he didn't want to go under the knife. He would put off having the surgery initially for months, and that soon turned into years. It was a decision that killed the momentum of Trial by Fire, and it quickly fell off the Billboard charts, and it also prevented the band from hitting the road to support the album at all. It was now 1998, and guitarist Neil Sean and keyboardist Jonathan Cain wanted to move on without Perry while still using the Journey moniker. They soon informed the frontman they were looking for singers, something Perry pleaded with them not to do, since he feared that it could hurt the band's name. But Journey existed before Perry, and the members thought it could exist without him. But the band would lose their drummer Steve Smith in the process, as he wasn't keen on embarking on a journey of auditioning singers. Nice pun, right? Soon enough, Steve Ogeri who had fronted the group Tall Stories would soon join Journey in 1998. But prior to joining the group, he had long left the world of rock and roll. As by the mid-90s, after becoming a father and getting married, he was now working as a maintenance manager with the clothing company The Gap in New York City. It was through a mutual friend Odd Jerry's name was brought up to Sean and Kane. Now Jerry would stay with the group touring with them and releasing the 2001 record Arrival, which was a commercial failure, resulting in the band losing their recording contract with Sony. However, Journey would continue to tour and released one more album with Ajeri, but the wheels came off once again in 2006. Ajeri's vocals deteriorated to the point that the band had to resort to using backing tracks during live shows, something they received heavy criticism for. He would leave the group and Journey would find their new and current vocalist Arnel Panetta. Then fast forward to 2017, Journey would finally be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and Steve Perry would join the band, at least on stage, to give a speech and a shout out to his former bandmates and his current replacement in the group but he wouldn't perform with the band that concludes today's video guys thanks for watching if you guys have suggestions for topics you'd like to see us cover use the link in the description box below and we'll see you again in rock and roll true stories